Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your spirit. God, I pray that you would have your perfect will in this moment, in this very atmosphere. I'm praying that you would go forth and you would have your perfect way, your perfect will be done in this place today in all of us and everyone in the hearing of your voice i pray that your perfect will be done yes god in this moment i submit myself to you oh god you can do whatever you want to do oh god god use me in a mighty way for your glory that your will will be done and i thank you for doing it oh god in jesus name and you may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Little sister Denisha, will you come here, please? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, get a little something. Come here, baby girl. I just want to love on you a little bit. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're doing an amazing job on those drums. Thank you. An amazing job. And saints, I want you to understand something. I need you to understand how blessed this house is. Hallelujah. How anointed this house is. And I'm I'm gonna pick on the elders just for just for a little bit. Let's look at the time. Amen. And I'm gonna pick on the elders because they'll they'll forgive me. <laughs> Elder Harris, if I asked you to go in that room and play the drums, would you be able to do that today? <laughs> huh? No, no. Elder, Elder Stubblefield, if I asked you to prepare for 60 days, would you be able to go in that room and play those drums like she did today? Well, glory. Possibly. 
What am I saying? This is an anointed house. And I've seen through my years, I've seen the anointing of worship fall on individuals. And what that looks like is one day her, all of my children play instruments. All of them. All of my children play an instrument. One day we were in service. You may be seated. You're doing a great job. I love you. And I just wanted to encourage you. One day we were in church. And after church was over, we began to fellowship like we did. We were eating and we're all in the kitchen eating. And the, I was the musician and my drummer was right next to me. My drummer was standing next to me. And all of a sudden we started hearing drums efficiently playing. And I looked at the drummer, I said, if you're standing here, who is playing the drums? I looked out, I looked out of the kitchen and there was my, I think he was seven or nine at the time, my middle son playing the drums. He walked over to the drums and began playing them out of nowhere. Not a lesson, not a thought, not an inkling. He began to play the drums efficiently. You've seen him. He moved on from the drums and he, then he began to play other instruments. And he's one of the he's one of the most profound musicians I know. And I know that sounds a little funny because I'm his father. But it's true. You've witnessed it. You've 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 worshiped under the, the anointing that he carries. And what I'm saying is that this house is blessed because it has fallen. There's a spirit of worship that has fallen on my youngest daughter. And I, like I said, all my children play. I've seen, you've heard Alicia sing. They all carry an anointing. So imagine me as a father sitting. Imagine God as the father watching some a babe begin to walk in their anointing, in their calling. Out of nowhere, she hasn't, she has brothers. She's grown up in it. But when it falls on the children, and they began to worship and they began to exercise. That is a gift from God. And I, I didn't want us to miss. We, we, in our, we can be casual sometimes with God. Sometimes we can be casual in the sense that God will move and perform a miracle right in front of your eyes. And we'll say, oh, that was nice. Wasn't that nice? Wasn't that cute? Did you see the way little Denisha played the drums? And, and it is. When you look at it naturally, it's cute. When you look at it spiritually, the spirit of God has fallen on her. I know many drummers that have played for years and couldn't do what she's done. It takes time to perfect a gift. But when God falls on you, it's instant. When the spirit of God falls on you, it's instant. And you began to operate and perform at a level that would have took many years to do instantly. So I, I just didn't want to, I didn't want us to casually ignore God's presence. Because his presence rests on this church and on all of us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I was in the shower. I, I told Pastor, God's been dealing with me in the shower. And I was in the shower when the Lord gave me the word. And um, I almost wanted to jump out the shower because, you know, sometimes it, you got to write it down quickly. This human mind is, is fickle. You know, if you if you hesitate a moment, you'll be like, what was that word? What was it? What did he say? So, you know, I almost jumped out the shower to run. And I know many times Miss Felicia looks at me like, oh, there he goes again, running. You just see me running from one room to another room looking for a pen and a piece of paper because I got to get it down. Though God says, we have a heart and as our God speak to me. The title of the message is God speak to me. And there's three questions that immediately comes to mind. How does God speak to us? 
Number two, how do I know that it's God? Question number three, how do I learn to hear God's voice better? Three things we wanna deal with today. How does God speak to us? How do I know that it's God? And how do I begin to operate in this proficiently where I can consistently hear God's voice and I can operate in God's voice, amen? Exodus 24, my my wife was, was uh, she uh, when I was, you know, when God gives the word, I get excited and I just want to share. Sometimes I'll call a pastor, sometimes my, my wife, uh, but she, she told me, she said, stop, stop right there. Just stop, tell, don't tell me nothing else about your word because you're in my word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she says, you're in my word. And, and you know, we, we often make mention of that, the way God has been operating in greater light. He's been tying us together as one, as a family, as a unit, as one body operating in his will. And so it, it, at this point, I, I I understand it. It's just the way God does it. At first, I was kind of like, how did he do that? <laughs> Let's go to the book of Exodus, uh, the 24th chapter. I'm going to do my best to, to move quickly and slowly at the same time. How do you move quickly and slowly at the same time? <laughs> I need to move quickly because we're on a clock. I need to move slow because I need to deliver God's word. So God help me to move quickly and slowly at the same time. Exodus 24 verses one. And he said unto Moses, come up unto the Lord. Thou and Aaron and Nadab and Abil, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice, and said, all the words which the Lord has said, will we do? Jumping down to verse 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Adab and Abel, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet as it were a paved work as fire stone, and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also they saw God and did not eat and drink. And the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me into the mount and be there and I will give thee the tables of stone and the law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua and Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up into the mount and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud.
within us that allows us to even communicate with God. We have a spirit inside of us that yearns to be in communication with God, that yearns to be in the presence of God. When God created us, he created us with a mind to think. He created us with organs, tissue, but he also gave us a spirit. And that spirit is where, where he communicates with us. How does God communicate with us? He can communicate with us audibly. And we'll see an example of that. He can communicate through man and saints, people. And he can communicate through us through our spirit. Amen? He can communicate through us through our spirit, through man, or through um, people, man, our spirit, and audibly. Amen. Thank you, Lord. John 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And did you notice that God is seeking for you? God is looking for you. God is looking for you daily. He's looking for you for your communication, for your fellowship. Anybody ever been in a relationship? Yeah. Hmm? We got children around here, so I know there's there's been some relationships. Come on. <laughs> and I remember when I was courting Sister Felicia, and I, I would call a pastor, and I, I'd, be, I'd be walking down 320th and Federal Way, and I'm walking, and I'm walking because I, I had a desire to be in her presence. And I was calling pastor, she's busy. She ain't got no time for me. And she said, well, now it's a great time for you to spend time with the Lord. Spend some more time. <laughs> she said, spend some more time with the Lord. Listen, it was dark. I'm walking on the street and pastor said, spend time with the Lord. I was trying to spend time with Felicia because I wanted to develop a relationship with her. I wanted to get to know her. And so I was calling and looking for ways to get in her presence. Do you know God desires for you to, to look for ways to get in his presence? Yes. You know, God wants a relationship with you so that he can, he can talk with you and he knows your heart. But do you know his heart? Do you know him? Do you know what God has planned for you and, and the road that he has for you? Do you know your calling and your destiny? Do you know why God created you? He will reveal all these things to you, but you have to have a close relationship with him. And you, so you got to spend time with him. Amen. God is a spirit and we must allow our spirit to commune with his spirit. Amen. First Kings, first Kings chapter 19. First Kings. 19. First Kings 19, verse 11. And he said, go forth and stand up, stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. Imagine the presence of God is breaking up the mountain, but when he speaks, it's a small 
bias. Mm. Small voice. Anybody know what white noise is? White noise is the noise that plays in the background when you're doing something. Me and Elder could be having a conversation and the and somebody could be over here having another conversation. The main conversation is between me and Elder, but our subconscious can hear that there's something else going on over here. We're not tuned into it. It's in the background, but we, our subconscious can hear that there's something else over here. But the main conversation is between me and Elder. And God was saying, don't let my voice become white noise in your life. You're hearing your work, you're hearing the people, you're hearing the bustle, you're hearing the news, you're hearing all this conversation in front of you. And God's voice is small. He says it's a small, still small voice. So if God's voice becomes background, you won't be able to hear it. It's not that he's not speaking, he's speaking, but you have other things in front of your face. You've given your attention and the lion's share of your ear to what's in front of you. And God says, I want to reverse that. I want my voice to be the loudest thing. If, if, Elder, if Elder Harris whispered, and I'm talking to Sister Felicia, and Elder whispered, I won't hear it too far away and he's whispering and I'm in a conversation with sister Felicia but now if I flip it if I get right next to elders mouth if I get right here to elder Harris and he whispers a thing to me I will hear God's voice is a still small voice meaning we have to be right here to God in order to hear what he's saying if we're out running around doing and hustle and bustling and we don't and we're not making provision to be close to God. As I was trying to be close to Sister Felicia, we would pull away. Pastor said, go out and get to know each other. Get away from everybody and just talk with each other. And so we would sit across the dinner table from each other about this far. And we began to talk to each other and share ideas and communicate with each other. God says, I need you to be close yes, to me yes, yes. so that I, when I speak to you, you can hear me. You won't be able to hear me if you are too far away from me. God is constantly speaking to us and through us, but sometimes we're just too far away. We didn't make enough time for God. We didn't get close enough to him. We didn't pull away and go into the midst of God. If you pull away and make time for God, just you and him in a closet. The Bible talks about being in a closet place, a secret place. If you are in a closet with God, when he speaks, you will hear him loudly. Even though he's whispering, it will be like thunderous noise. Because you don't, there's no, there's silence in the closet. There's nothing else in the closet but just you and God. The clothes aren't talking. The, the hangers aren't, aren't talking. The rug isn't talking. There's no noise in the closet. It's just you and this still, small voice. And it will be like thunderous noise. Noise. Why? Because there's nothing competing with yes. it. When you pull away and you're in that closet with God and there's no other sound going on, there's no kids, there's no husbands, there's no wife, there's nothing else but you and God, his voice will be like thunder. Why? Because there's nothing competing with God's voice. There's no noise to drown out God's voice. You've eliminated all the noise and competition. And so the only thing that's left is God's voice. And it will be loud in your ear because you've made an effort to, have to make relationship with God. You've made time for God. You've made provision. You've pulled away. You stole, stole time and, and atmosphere and you've made... Uh, space, God, it's just me and you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Jesus. And I'm not here, Lord, with a Christmas list. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not here with a bunch of needs and a bunch of wishes and demands. God, yes, Lord. I just want you to speak to me. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Speak, Lord. Jesus. <sighs> yes, Lord. I just want to know what your will is for my life. Yes. God, yes, I have needs, but you know what my needs are before I even knew. I'm just here to get to know you. I need to need, I need to know you better, God. I need to hear your voice so I can lead this family, oh God. I need to hear your voice so I can know which direction to go, God. I need to hear your voice. Yes, so I can speak your word clearly. Jesus, God, I need to hear your voice. Don't want it to be me, God. I don't want it to be my imagination or my opinion or my thoughts, God. I want it pure. And I need to hear your voice speak to me. It's not a wonder why when I'm in the shower and there's just the water pouring over my body, God can begin to speak to me. That the door is shut. There's no kids. There's no work. There's no wife. There's no nothing. It's just me and this water pouring. Thank you. Thank you. God is so good. And in that atmosphere, God can speak his word clearly. Thank you. Mm. As a thunderous noise into my life, he can speak to me. Yes, dear Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Job. Bless you. Thank you. Job. Chapter 37. God wants to speak to you. God wants you to pull away and spend time with him with no interruptions, no competition yes, for he your does. heart, yes, he for does. your time. He just wants you yes, he does. all by yourself. Job 37. At this also my heart trembleth and is moved out of his place. Hear attentively the noise of his voice and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. Hear attentively the noise of his voice and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. He directeth, he directeth it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the end of the earth. After it, a voice roareth, he thundereth with the voice of his excellency. And he will not stay them with his voice is heard. He will not stay them when his voice is heard. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things does he do, which he cannot, which we cannot comprehend. God has a thunderous voice and a still small voice at the same time. The only difference is his presence, his glory, everything about God is thundereth. But when we are this close to God, the power of his voice is thundereth and it just knocks us back. That's how powerful God's voice is. But, and, but he speaks in a still, small voice. So we have to be this close to him. 
One of the biggest decisions I've made recently in my life was to marry that woman. It was a, it was a, it was a, I was minding my own business, Pastor. I was minding my own business. I was minding my own business. My head was down. I had no interest in anything. And one day, this thunderous voice went forth. She was going forth and the spirit of God was coming out of her and I looked up and I heard God's voice. And I said within myself, who is that? But I heard God's voice in her and it, it got the, my attention. When you're not paying attention to anything, God has a way of getting your attention by prompting your spirit, nudging your spirit. And he nudged my spirit that day to look up and to take notice of his voice coming out of this woman. And my spirit was drawn to her. So God, he pricked my heart towards her. But that's not enough. It's not enough just to get to, to have somebody's attention. You, you can see somebody and say, oh, they can be attractive or you can see or do something that you like and, and say, oh, I, I, you notice that person. Now, that, that doesn't mean go off and marry them. I noticed her and the Lord began to draw me towards her. But I didn't ask her to marry me right away just because I noticed her. And imagine, I have all me and all of my children, all my household behind me. Every decision that I make weighs the balance of their life is in the balance. Every decision I make, if, if I go left, they fall. If I go too far to the right, they fall. I have to stay right in the center. So every decision I was making in that time of my life was critical. Whether I work, whether I don't work. Do I work in Redmond, in Bellevue? Do I stay close to home in Federal Way? What do I do? I was in constant prayer with God. God, I need you to speak to me about concerning my job. I need you to speak to me. I can no longer spend six hours commuting. Hour and a half this way, an hour and a half back, that's three hours of my day gone, just getting in two, four, three. I spend an hour and a half getting there. I spend nine hours there. I spend an hour and a half back while my children are at home without me. I said, Lord, I need something that is close to home so that I can be instant if they need me. And so I prayed, God, I need to hear your voice. I looked, I thought about two companies. I applied to one company. The company hired me on the spot and God's been elevating me ever since. Did I, did I hear God's voice? How do you know if you heard God's voice? Does it line up with God's word? Does it line up with after the aftermath of your decision? Look at it. Is there fruit or is there destruction? You make it, many women of God, if you make a decision, if you seek God's voice, seek his face and seek his voice and move out on a decision based upon the faith that you've heard his voice, then you sit back and watch the fruit of your decision. Is there increase? Is there life? Is there joy? Is there any good thing to speak of from that decision? That's one element of confirmation, is the fruit of the decision. Yes, sir. One level of confirmation, did I hear from God or not, is the fruit of the decision. Yes, if you move in it and things just fall apart, you can't get, I moved the Home Depot and I'm having troubles with my manager. I moved the Home Depot, they're not, um, the money's not, I'm not having enough money to pay my bills. I moved the Home Depot and there's conflict, there's issues and there's crisis and there's destruction and there's, did I hear God's voice clearly? Or did I, I hear God's voice and there's promotion, there's increase. 
within within 30 days they gave me a raise within another couple of months they gave me another raise within within a few months they gave me a promotion within a few months from that I've, I've interviewed for another promotion there's been increase my bills are paid there's financial blessing did I hear from God concerning that job the fruit of it says yes when God speaks to you he sends confirmation where's Deacon Rodney Last yesterday, I, I, I text Elder Harris. At this point, I remember when you're first trying to hear God's voice, you are so unsure. You are so unsure. Is that God? Is it not God? And when you start talking about money, you are really unsure because you know people don't play about their money. Don't come talking to me about God said, give me this. God said, give me that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You, it better be God. <laughs> you, when you open your mouth and say, God said concerning somebody's money, you better be hearing from God. Because the fruit's going to come back and they're going to look right at you. <laughs> God said. Aaron, I did what you said and it ain't been nothing. I'm in bankruptcy because of what you said God said. <laughs> you better be telling, you better keep it straight. But at this point, you know, we talk about our headship. And we talk about pastors' ability to allow us to grow and strengthen, right? She lets us exercise. And when you exercise, you get stronger. At this point, when God speaks, I can just say it. Why? Because I've, I've tested it. I've tried it. I've seen the fruit of it. Amen. So when, but there's always a need for confirmation so that you can have confidence. When I texted Elder, I didn't think nothing about a seed offering. I just was excited that Elder Harris has been rubbing off on me. <laughs> if you know anything about Elder Harris, he pays attention to and times and numbers and things. And so I was excited. Look, I'm, I'm acting like Elder Harris. <laughs> 12, today's date is 12, 12, 21. And my spirit noticed it. And it was significant. So I text the elder, I text the pastor. I called the pastor. I said, Pastor, what do you think about this? You know, I wanted to get confirmation that, I, that God was speaking to me. Yeah. You know, wouldn't it be great to plant a seed on this day? She said, yeah, that, I, she felt it. She agreed. Confirmation. There's agreement there. We get here, we go, and we speak what God said. One, one, 12, 12, 21, we're going to plant a seed. We're going to keep seed in the ground. Amen. And again, we're not replacing the 121. We we are growing and getting deeper in our giving. Yes, Lord. All right, we're growing and getting deeper in our giving so that God can do. We got to get out of here. There's there's maybe five seats left. We got to get out of this building, and then for us for us to grow and get to that building, we're gonna bring up some money. We're gonna raise some money to purchase a building. Yeah. Amen. And increase God's will in our life increase our ability to communicate so deacon rodney gave confirmation today about what the same god was saying to him i think so there's always confirmation when god speaks he sends confirmation yes lord when god speak you can follow the fruit of that decision yes. and the fruit of that decision needs to be life yes. not lord. death Oh, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. You hear God's voice and you act on his voice. The fruit of it is life. And if you made the wrong decision, the fruit of it is death. And the only thing that's needed in that moment is God, forgive me. I missed you. God, forgive me. Turn around and go in the opposite direction. Don't waddle in it. We're human. We're fallible. We were created. And, and, and when, when Adam sinned, we, were, we, we automatically fell into corruption because of his, his sin. That's why Jesus had to come to restore that. So don't waddle in it. Don't dwell in it. When you miss God, say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. I clearly can see that that wasn't your will. Forgive me. Move on. God says, wipe the dust off you. Pick yourself up and go on. Spend some more time with him. How do you miss God? You miss God when you are not spending time with him, but yet you're making decisions on his behalf. 
How are you gonna make a decision on, on God's behalf and you haven't sp spoke to him? How can I as a store manager or as an assistant manager go out and speak on behalf of the store manager and I didn't talk to the store manager? So then the customer comes back and says, well, your, your assistant manager said, blah, 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 that you said. And he said, I never said that. I'm sorry, I will not be able to. He was mistaken. You have to get with the father to get the instruction for you to be able to speak what he's saying. Spend time with him. Hear his voice. God will send confirmation. He can speak to you audibly. He can speak to your spirit. He can speak through man. Many times we elders, deacons, sisters, brother, we get up and say, God is saying that we need to do X, Y, and Z. And he speaks through us. He speaks through pastor. And I, I am a witness. Pastor, the very first thing pastor did in my life, she laid her hands on me and she anointed me and she said, all the blessings of greater light now belongs to you. She spoke a word in my life. What is the fruit of that word? <laughs> Nothing but life and increase over and over and over in an abundancy of increase in my life since she spoke that word if you knew where i was in that moment i was in a, a valley a death valley i was in a desert land and she spoke a word of life into my life and i've saw nothing but increase elder harris it's been nothing but increase in my life Amen. you can judge a word by the fruit does it render life does it render death? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Draw nigh unto the Lord. Go deep into the midst of God. Go into God. Steal away. Just you and God. Just hide yourself in him and let him give you what he has for you. This is one of the first times in, in preaching that I am. Um, there was, there was multiple pages, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> multiple pages, Jesus. and God's not done with this message, but I, I feel the spirit of the Lord to, to let's wrap this up, and we'll, we'll, we'll give you some more later. You, Don't let God's voice be white noise, background noise in your life, but let God voice be the only thing that you hear sometimes in your life you have to pull away let me correct that every day of your life you need to pull away and let God's voice be the only thing that you're hearing you got to get away from people you got to get away from the news the radio the the work you got you got you got to turn off the cell phone turn off turn life off off and let it just be you and God yes, yes. so that you can hear his voice as we enter in this year we're getting ready to draw close to 2021 we're entering into 2022 let us draw close to God yes, yes. let us intentionally draw close to God just you and him and let us go into God let us go into him and so that we get so wrapped up in him, we're so wrapped up in God, the only thing we hear is his voice. Amen. This week, this week I want us to pay close attention to the church fast. So Sister Turner, what, what is Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tell me what the church. Tuesday Friday. and Fridays. Tuesdays and Friday, and we'll tell me the details of the of the fast. I'm telling on myself. Why? Well, how do you know? Because I don't know it. So how? Do, if I don't know it, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Nothing to eat until four p.m. Tuesday and Friday. Nothing to eat until four. Wake up early on Tuesday. Wake up early. Get on the prayer call at five a.m. Mm -hmm. Don't eat until four. Mm -hmm. Cut out as much noise as you possibly can. 
Stay away from your phones, stay away from TV, stay from radio, just you and God as much as you can. This week, I want you to pull away. I want you to participate in the church fast on Tuesdays and Friday, nothing to eat until 4 p.m., amen? I want you to start your day in prayer every single day. From this day to the next day we come back, next Sunday, if the Lord allows us to be here next Sunday, I, I want you to testify of what God does yeah. this week. When you pull away, you start your day in prayer and thanksgiving. In the middle of the day, I want you to steal away and I want you to just get before God, keep God close to you. I want you to pray in the middle of the day and before you close your eyes. And I know a lot of you probably already do this. I know Pastor does this already, but some of us aren't doing it. I, saw, I see your hand, Brother Willie. I see your hand. I'm not alone. But this week, we want to pay close attention. Our fasting, listen to God's voice, um, our prayer, and getting his word. Spend some, spend some time. This week, I want you to dedicate more time with God. And we want to see what God is saying about this world that we live in. Who knows, God might give you the word that changes this whole world around just because you pulled away in made time. God will use whoever he wants to use. There's no big eyes and little use. There's no, God will use whoever he wants to and this world is in desperate need of God's voice. And it will come through us. It'll come through you, Sister Harris. Why, your heart's pure. God can use you. God can speak through you. Your voice might be where we where we find our next building. Your voice might be where we go the, the, for the finances. God will use us if we make ourselves available to him. Amen. Amen. Yes, go amen. to your mountain. Jesus. This week, I want you to go to your mountain. And I want you to hear from God's voice. And I want you to come back and tell us what God said. Okay? I want you to make some time for him more than what you do. I, well, I already pray. Pray more. I already read. This week, I want you to read more. I'm already fasting. Fast longer and harder. We want to go into God. And we want God to speak to God, speak to us. Speak to us this week. Yes, Thank you. And I want you to come back and tell what God has said to you, amen? And we'll, Lord willing, we will have plenty of opportunity in 2022 to, to finish up this lesson. I thank God for Elder Harris, I see increase in my life. Yes. <laughs> I see yes. increase financially, I see increase spiritually, and I see increase in my worship. Praise the Lord. And I'm glad about it. Amen. God bless you. I pray that something, I know, I know God has spoke. And I know when God speaks, our lives are changed. So we just have to respond to what God is saying. Yes. This week, we respond to what God is saying, and the fruit will be witness of its own. Amen. Amen. God bless you.